Time attack is a discipline of motorsport where competitors compete against the clock, trying to achieve the fastest lap possible. At the end of the event, whoever has the single fastest lap wins. It's as simple as that. This bare bones format has taken the world by storm, but the holy temple of time attack is at Tsukuba Circuit in Shimotsuba, Japan. Each winter, competitors make the trip from around the globe to prove their worth and chase new records. Organized time attack events began in the mid-1960s, and as the sport grew in popularity, so did the development of these specialized speed machines, attracting talents from all realms of the automotive world. And at the center of it all is a man known as Tomohiko under Suzuki. While it's hard to pinpoint the start of time attack, Everyone seems to agree that the first big event was the Cuba Super Battle, hosted by RevSpeed Magazine in May of 1994. By this time, tuner car culture was taking over Japan, and to showcase the efficacy of their products, tuners would enter competitions like this. At this event, the car to beat was an R32 GTR from a Chizo Nakura of Mines. Mines formed in 1985 originally competing in big power, drag, and top speed events. They developed just about everything on their R32, aero, brake pads, suspension, exhaust, engine components, and so on. The only exception being the two GT2530 turbochargers coming from HKS. However, mine's biggest ace in the hole was their ability to remap the factory ECU, which allowed them to extract wild horsepower numbers from the GTR, depending on the tune, anywhere from 480 to 600 plus. All of this led to an all-wheel drive monster. Not only could the car run a 10 second quarter mile, but it could also handle incredibly well. To pilot the car, mine's got AG Tarzan Yamada, which turned out to be a great choice. AG Yamada had dropped out of high school to follow his dream of racing F1 with Ayrton Senna. He was dominating F3 and well on his way to reach his goal when he got asked to race for Option Magazine. He ended up working full-time for Option and an editor there told him AG was a boring name suggesting he change it to Tarzan based on his long hair at the time, which has only gotten crazier over the years. Ever since, Tarzan has been working with Option and competing in drift and time attack events around the globe. With Tarzan behind the wheel of the Mines R32, he managed to get around all 2,000 meters of Sakuba in just over one minute. An incredible time and enough to win the event. The next year, the same team shaved off another two tenths, nearing closer to the once thought impossible sub one minute lap. To understand just how fast this is, we can look at some of the fastest production cars driven by world class drivers such as the Drift King himself, Keiichi Suchia. A McLaren F1 ran a 104. While a Ferrari F40 ran a 103. Even today, with all the modern technology we have, the current production world record is a 59.3, achieved by a 2020 R35 GTR Nismo edition. This is an incredible achievement, but 24 years before the Nismo team achieved this goal, Mines and Tarzan did even better, with the 59.181 in 1997. Mines tried to keep momentum with the R33 GTR, but had a hard time improving over the lightweight R32 until 1999 when they brought out their new R34. This car was a masterpiece, and to this day is considered by many to be the magnus opus of Mines.
Admired by everyone from Keiichi Tsuchiya to Paul Walker and winning the grand prize at the Tokyo Auto Salon, this car managed a 58-68 in 1999. With further tuning, it eventually hit a 57.7 and is still the quickest car Mines has ever made. The most impressive thing is this car was, and still is, extremely drivable, maintaining all the interior trim and even the catalytic converter. In terms of a tuned streetcar, which many feel embodies the spirit of Time Attack, this was the perfect car. However, things were about to change. HKS, the company that made the turbos for the Mines car, decided it was their turn to showcase their product, and began working on a project they called TRB1, short for Sakuba Record Breaker 1. With a clear goal, HKS went all out building the ultimate time attack machine and spared no expense. While the car was based off a Toyota Altezza, very little of the original car remained by the time HKS had spent the equivalent of roughly 300,000 US dollars in modifications. The car was barely recognizable beneath the menacing carbon fiber aero which housed the full tube frame chassis. The engine was still a 3S GE, but it had been bored and stroked with the whole HKS parts catalog thrown at it, including a GT3037S turbo to extract 600 horsepower. To reach a 50-50 weight distribution, the engine was pushed way back, well beyond the firewall. The car had a 6-speed sequential transmission and giant CNC brackets to support a highly modified pushrod suspension arrangement. To harness the car's potential, HKS got Nobutero Taniguchi, also known as Nob, no one better. Nob grew up racing minibikes before switching to cars when he got his own AE86. He enjoyed street racing and drifting, but didn't make the jump to professional driving until later in life when HKS took note of him winning a club sport event at Suzuka in 1999. In 2001, Nob won the first ever D1 Grand Prix with HKS in an S15. He then hopped into the TRB1 and took it to Tsukuba where it lived up to its name, crushing the lap record with an incredible 55.853. With the job done, the car was put back on the trailer and sent to HKS where it sat ever since. The TRB1 split the time attack community in two, as while it was an incredible feat of engineering, it was far removed from the spirit of time attack and modified street cars, boasting resources and technology other competitors couldn't possibly afford or gain access to. It was also done using slicks, while other competitors had a gentleman's agreement to only use street tires. In the end, the car was deemed too over the top and the lap time was revoked. This wouldn't stifle HKS though, as they began creating the most dominant time attack car to ever exist. Meanwhile, also in 2001, a 25-year-old Tomohiko Suzuki purchased a used S15. Unlike Mines and HKS, which had a pedigree in racing, huge development programs, budgets, hired racing drivers, and more, Mr. Suzuki was nearly the polar opposite. During the day, he worked at the office of his family's pharmacy and then spent his evenings toiling away on his car. His first car was an R32 Skyline Type M followed by an S13 Silvia and then an S14, so the move to the S15 was a natural progression. He dove into working on the S15 right away, installing a rear wing, brakes, front mount intercooler, turning up the boost, and more. He even installed 18-inch wheels, as even though they were thought to be slower at the time, he was willing to sacrifice a few milliseconds as he thought they looked much cooler than the 17s. He was also a talented driver, and before long the car was lapping Sakuba in 1 minute and 7 seconds. This is a very respectable lap, but it was nowhere near the record-breaking times the big tuning companies were pushing. And in 2002, another tuning titan decided to join the fray, June Auto. Jun, founded by Junichi Tanaka in 1980, was renowned for building not just the fastest streetcars in Japan, but the entire world. Back in 1991, they took a Nissan 300ZX to the Bonneville Salt Flats and clocked a top speed of 262 miles per hour, or 422 kilometers per hour. This made their Z32 the fastest road-going car in the world at this time. 
While June's fame came from drag and top speed events, they decided it was their turn to go for the Time Attack throne and began pumping out a variety of cars in their signature yellow and green, the most dominant of which was the Hyper Lemon Evo 5. The Evo 5 was already an absolute track weapon. From the factory, the RS model clocked a 104 around Tsukuba without any modifications. To go for the record, June lightened the car up and threw their own parts at it, including their 2.2 stroker and camshaft kit. When paired with a Trust TDO6 turbo, the car made more than double what it did from the factory, boasting 575 horsepower. With good bones, high power, and more aero than most cars at the time, the Hyper Lemon Evo 5 managed a 55.976 in December of 2002. This car was built for more than just Sakuba though, and traveled around the world beating records and winning events. One such trip had the Hyper Lemon going to Zhuhai Circuit in China, where it challenged the record set by a Porsche GT3 RS on slicks. It beat it by 3 seconds. The car also went to Germany, where it won not a time attack event or race, but a drift event. June went on to build some really cool cars, but none could surpass their Evo 5. However, HKS had been working in silence on a car with a much more focused approach. TRB2 was ready to reclaim the record at Sakuba. HKS also recognized the potency of the Evo platform and chose an Evo 8 for their new build. Famous for their engine tuning abilities, HKS put their best foot forward and developed a vast array of parts for the 4G63, most of which were also made available to the public in their parts catalog. The result was 552 horsepower, sent to the wheels via a rally art dog box. The body kit was once again made from dry carbon fiber, but the rest of the car was much tamer when compared to TRB1, utilizing more conventional coilovers and Yokohama AO48 street tires. In late 2003, with Knob piloting the car, TRB2 achieved its purpose and hit 55 seconds flat, reclaiming the record. While this time was reason to celebrate, everyone knew the 54 second barrier was about to be broken. And during the Super Lap Challenge in 2004, HKS did exactly that with a 54.739. <laughs> They weren't done yet though, and Knob went out again in an attempt to push deeper into the 54s. This time though, disaster. Knob recalls feeling hopeless as he charged straight towards the barrier. The brakes had begun to fade, which led to him misplacing his foot on the pedals. Thankfully, no one was hurt but this dramatic accident would be the end of TRB2. Or was it? Because the car was built with so many in-house HKS parts, it wouldn't be long before the car rose from the ashes, this time bearing the name CT230R. With the dry carbon sprayed over in shiny stinger red, the car came back with a vengeance and was ready to lay down the most dominant records the world has ever seen. During the rebuild, HKS used their time wisely, increasing the engine to 2.3 liters, swapping to their own 5-speed sequential, and doing whatever they could to eke out precious hundreds of a second, like pushing Knob's seating position further back into the car. With these improvements, the Time Attack community waited in anticipation to see if the reborn car could beat its own record, which had now sat uncontested for a couple of years. As the car still made around the same power, many doubted it could improve much on the 54.7 second time. But 
on January 6, 2007, Knob and HKS obliterated the record with a 53.589. No one could even come close to this time, and the record would remain unchallenged for the longest period in Time Attack history. So, with the job done at Tsukuba, HKS claimed some records at other Japanese tracks and then shipped the car to the United States to show off their creation and crush some more records. A few Japanese cars had already made the trip to the States, including the Mines R34 GTR, which had gone over a year prior in 2006. While there, Option filmed an episode of Hot Version, trying to beat the record at the streets of Willow Springs. With Keiichi Tsuchiya behind the wheel, the GTR beat the record by more than 4 seconds. When the CT-230R and Knob got to America, it competed at the 2007 Superlap Battle at Buttonwillow where it not only won the event, but also broke the track record by 5 seconds. Probably. Through here it's so fast. The record set by Mines and HKS proved that the Japanese were quite literally ahead of the curve. But, with Option documenting their stories, they served to spark an interest in Time Attack for car enthusiasts around the world, including Australia. In 2008, the first Superlap Australia was held at the now-defunct Oran Park Raceway. The event was a success, with far more competitors and spectators showing up than anticipated, and was even bigger in 2009. With the huge uptick in popularity and Time Attack growing around the world, there was the opportunity to create something incredible. And in 2010, the first ever World Time Attack Challenge took place at Sydney Motorsport Park. This international event drew competitors from around the world and acted as a battlefield to find out who really was the fastest. At the 2010 event, Tarzan was there and placed third driving the Tomei Cusco Subaru WRX STI with a 131.9. The Sierra Sierra Evo 8 from the US took second with the Canadian driver achieving a 131.88. And in first place? Well, it was Tarzan again, driving the Cyber Evo to a staggering 130.587. The Cyber Evo was an incredible car especially for a relatively small team owned by Mr. Takazawa, who was a dentist. It was pitted against the CT-230R a few times at tracks around Japan, but could never quite surpass the HKS machine. The best it achieved at Tsukuba was a 54.392. Back in Australia, the 2011 event was even bigger and the competition much fiercer. Tarzan's dominant time from the last year wouldn't have been enough to even reach the podium this year. But thankfully, the Cyber Evo had gone through some serious development and laid down a 128.85, breaking the record and winning the event. Second place was once again the Sierra Sierra Evo 8. And while it was much heavier than the Cyber Evo, compensated with over 800 horsepower from the 4G63. In third was the Garage Revolution RX7, which utilized a 13B rotary engine. Fourth was an up and coming car, the Tilton Evo 5. And fifth was Tomohiko Suzuki, although he was now known as Under Suzuki, 
a nickname he got as a result of constantly dealing with understeering issues in his S15. In addition to the name change, the S15 had changed even more from its days of running 107 laps at Sakuba in 2001. Under had made friends at Scorch Racing and managed to quote unquote borrow a Blitz Turbo from their showcase, increasing the S15's horsepower to 450. He got his hands on a Hollinger sequential transmission, stickier AO48 tires, and worked towards breaking the one minute mark. It took six years of late nights, but in 2007, he achieved his goal and got a 59.2. Rather than rest on his laurels though, Under wanted more and began tearing into his S15 in 2007. At the same time, the Horikoshi brothers, also known as the Orange brothers, began cutting up their two S14s. They were also involved with Scorch Racing and developed a friendly rivalry with Under, pushing each other to make their Sylvias as quick as possible around Tsukuba. The Orange Brothers, Hiro and Tsutomu's cars are best known as the Exceed Moat S14s. Using a similar setup to Under's, the two S14s were incredible and proved that rear-wheel drive cars could hang with the all-wheel drive monsters that had dominated Time Attack since its inception. Hero's S14 reached a 54.882 in 2014, before a crash brought an end to the car. I want to mention that the Exceed Mode S14s are the cars that got me into S14s and pushed me to buy my own. After the crash, the Orange Brothers still supported Under on his mission, joining what has now become known as the Under Suzuki Victims Association a team of friends which has helped the S15 reach where it is today. However, after Under's big rebuild, the car had a slow start, setting a 59.2 again, the same time as before the rebuild. This didn't discourage Under though, who had big dreams, even making a Tanabata wish to reach the 54 mark with the car. While this seemed like a big jump, the car started to improve fast, reaching a 57.354 in 2009. In 2010, with plywood arrow on the car, it hit a 56.394. This is the same year that Ian Baker, the CEO of World Time Attack, convinced Under to make the trip to Australia in 2011. While fifth at his first event was an impressive result, the car could likely have done much better if it wasn't riddled with transmission and engine troubles. The trip wasn't a complete loss though, as Under met some valuable connections, like Andrew Brilliant who helped him redesign his aero. With better aero and a dry sump system, the car ran a 54.162 back at Tsukuba. In 2012, Under returned to WTAC, but again ran into engine troubles during practice and placed fourth. Development didn't stop though, and in 2012, with bigger tires and more updates to the aero, Under did the impossible not just updating the rear-wheel drive record, but breaking the overall record at Tsukuba with a 52.649. With Tsukuba conquered, Under set his focus back on Australia, but again ran into a plethora of issues, from power steering to a damaged turbine. He missed the podium again with another fourth. This time, the rebuild took a while, with some huge changes like implementing double wishbone suspension in the rear. Under missed the Japanese time attack season and scrambled to make WTAC 2014. He showed up with a car that still wasn't set up and with a damaged engine yet again, but decided to put it all on the line for one lap. He ran a 125.88, breaking the rear-wheel drive record, but placing second overall, not even four hundredths of a second behind the Tilton Evo. This pattern of making huge changes to the car to stay competitive, while also dialing in the changes in time for WTAC, created a vicious cycle for the small team of Under and his victims. 
Nonetheless, he continued to improve the car and chase the elusive WTAC win, but instead developed another similar pattern, placing in third in 2015, 2016, and 2017. He took a break in 2018 to revamp his S15, but instead came to co-drive with Fire Ando's Evo, and he placed third again. While the WTAC results were disappointing, Underhead continued to improve upon his record at Cuba, with a 52.363 in 2014, a 51.127 in 2015, and eventually a 50.366 in 2017. class of his own. And then, TRB3 showed up. Much like TRB1, TRB3 was also way over the top, and again pushed the boundaries of what a tuning car is. Unlike Under and his small team of victims, HKS was now a global powerhouse, making tens of millions in revenue and had hundreds of employees. Using their resources, HKS once again assembled the Avengers of Time Attack, with their engineers Knob to Drive and Andrew Brilliant to design the arrow. With the tunnels and other groundbreaking arrow on the car, Andrew commented the car made around 30% more downforce than Under's S15, a staggering amount. There was very little left of the GT86 base. The car was now super wide, had 800 plus horsepower, the front and rear suspension were changed to a double wishbone setup, and the interior looked more like something out of Star Wars. While this would have seemed like far too much to be accepted by the community a few years ago, this was the way the sport was going, with more and more competitors adapting these strategies. After a year of development, TRB3 quickly closed the gap on under and set a new unofficial record of 50.259. HKS wanted more though and set their sights on the 50 second barrier. And on February 15th, 2018, Knob drove the TRB3 to an incredible 49.445, a time that remains unchallenged to this day. HKS proudly announced their new record, the community was again split. As to break the barrier, HKS again chose to run on slicks rather than street legal tires. HKS explained that slicks were used as a safety measure, as the insane amount of downforce would be dangerous on a semi-slick and could cause the tire to burst. While this is a very real concern, in changing the tire they'd removed the last piece of what had kept the playing field somewhat even. Many fans revoked the record, while others wondered how fast Under could run using a slick tire, and how he'd respond. At this time though, Under's car was once again in pieces, while he toiled away into the night. Under was very aware of the rapid ongoing changes in time attack, and realized his stock body car wouldn't be able to compete for much longer, so he decided to rebuild based on the WTAC regulations. The car made the trip back to Sydney in 2019, where, unfortunately, history would repeat itself, and a connecting rod would soon punch through the engine, forcing Under's victims and other helping teams to rush to swap in another billet engine. With the swap complete, the car was faster than ever, and set some incredible sector times. But then, another disaster. Just as HKS had feared, the extreme speed and downforce caused the tire to burst, and the S15 to crash.
Under was airlifted to a nearby hospital, but thankfully didn't have any serious injuries. From his hospital bed, he wasn't ejected, but instead remarked on just how fast the new setup was, which aided him in crashing at over 250 kilometers an hour. While the car was just beginning to look promising after two years of work, he was again forced to rebuild. The Time Attack community and WTAC organizers sympathized with Under and created fundraisers to help him rebuild and compete once again. I want to mention, this isn't the first time Under had experienced a tire burst, nor was he the only car at the event to have one. As a result of the incidents, many are now pushing to change the rules in the top classes to allow potentially safer tire as the cars get crazier. The 2020 WTAC event was cancelled due to pandemic concerns, which may have been a blessing in disguise as it gave Under more time to work on his new car. Other competitors have also been hard at work though, and new stars are beginning to cement their place at the top, such as the RP968, which has won the past two events with a 119.277 in 2019, way ahead of other competitors. Based around the Porsche 968, the talented team is rumored to have spent over $4 million on the car to dominate at WTAC. Meanwhile, back in Japan, cars are beginning to close in on Under and the TRV3, with Fire Ando's Escort Evo running a 50.492 in February of 2021. More international cars have also been traveling to the Holy Temple of Time Attack to leave their mark, such as Will Ao Young's 2012 Honda Civic Si from Canada, which ran a 53.071 breaking the front-wheel drive record in 2019. With the world in lockdown, many competitors are using the time to construct faster cars than ever. And when things start opening up, records are sure to fall. WTAC 2021 has been approved for the fall, and I can't wait to see who shows up to challenge the RP968. Hopefully Under is there in the mix and can break the curse. The cars of today are far cries of the tuning cars of hobbyists in the early 90s and push every boundary possible within each event's regulations. While some argue we've gone too far, I think it's hard to stop the human spirit and people like Under from maximizing their vehicles. Hopefully new classes and regulations can keep the top cars safe and competitive, while other classes can maintain the spirit and low barrier to entry of grassroots time attack. I hope that one day I can get my own S14 out to compete and be somewhat competitive within a class, but that's a story for another day. Thank you so much for watching this far. I've really enjoyed putting this video together and learning more about the Time Attack community. I know this video only scratches the surface, but maybe in the future I'll focus in on some other incredible stories within the Time Attack and motorsport communities. If you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If this video does well, I'll definitely consider doing similar projects in the future in addition to the sporadic build videos I do now. Again, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.